them on the Great Plains to rot and die. Oh, they're already dead. What happened to those buffalo? Did any of those buffalo ever become a fossil? No. Not one will ever be a fossil. And that is because when, when things die, they decay and go to dust. And when you bury a dog in your backyard, he's not going to become a fossil either. What it takes to have a fossil, whether it's a dinosaur fossil or a petrified wood or anything like this, we've got to have some cataclysmic event that has not only killed that animal, but buried it under tons of gravel or volcanic ash or dirt in some landslide. Footprints of dinosaurs is even more incredible. Um, if you're going to have uh, some dinosaur and Wow, imagine even the cases of dinosaur footprints and human footprints together. Okay, a dinosaur and the human are walking along uh, the mud of some riverbank. Well, that mud and everything in it ha would have to be preserved almost immediately after those footprints were made. And that's not a normal thing of the, the riverbank just drying up and, uh, you know, during some drought. I mean, a volcanic eruption or some landslide would have had to preserve that instantly. So now we get back to the subject of geological dating and 65 million years for dinosaurs. Even the mystery of the extinction, the so-called extinction of dinosaurs. What has created that? One point I would like to make is that the very mechanism that causes and creates fossils is the same mechanism that causes the extinction of these animals. And that is cataclysmic changes, tidal waves, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. Marine fossils are even more difficult to explain without the use of cataclysms. If a pleliosaur or a coelacanth or any kind of fish suddenly dies and is floats to the bottom of a lake or an ocean or a river and lies in the silt, is it going to normally become a fossil? No, again not. Will decay, will will just go back to the gene pool of nature. So as we look at fossils, we start to see that they themselves are indicative of these cataclysms of the past. And now we can also begin to look at geological dating in a different way. One of the reasons for this would be that fossils then and the geological strata that we, we find them, are simply assumed to have accumulated over millions and millions of years. The kind of geology we're taught today is a geology called uniformitarian geology. And this is the school of geology which tells us that geological change is very slow. It happens over millions of years. We can see the kind of changes. And therefore, when we have layers of strata, we then create a, a period of time that's vast in scope, covering millions and millions of years. Yet the same strata in the opposing theory of geology, which is called cataclysmic geology, that same strata can build up not over millions of years, but in just a few years or even in a matter of days. For instance, in a tidal wave or landslide situation, uh, a layer of gravel, clay, or material can accumulate not over millions of years, but in a matter of hours. So therefore, when we now have our ravine in North Dakota with its various strata layers, when we, if we assume, well, this strata here is would have taken a million years to accumulate this strata, another million years, and so on and so on. And now we pull a dinosaur bone out of one of the layers of strata. We then say, this is 65 million years old. But yet, in cataclysmic geology, that strata, rather being dated in millions of years, could be dated possibly by only thousands of years. It is quite possible that man and dinosaurs live together but not necessarily 65 million years ago in the past, but in a more recent time. And the solution to this would be, to explain it, is that in geological time and the periods we have, these are based on what's known as uniformitarian geology. 
and a, a kind of geology that assumes extremely slow, steady rate of uh, geological change and stratification. However, in the opposing theory of geology, which is called cataclysmic geology, we have geological change happening in a much faster period of time with cataclysms and stratification occurring not over millions of years, but just in a matter of days. If cataclysmic geology is the, a more correct view of the way our planet works geologically, what we would then have is a tremendous compression of the periods of time that are talked about with dinosaurs, where suddenly 65 million years of stratification is compressed into just uh, maybe a 2 million years or something like that. And so therefore, dinosaur fossils that are said to be 65 million years old, and this is a date that's totally arbitrary, not, there's no carbon dating or any other sort of uh, scientific so-called dating with these fossils, but merely the date associated with them is where they're found in the strata. There's no exact scientific way of dating the fossils of dinosaurs. There's no scientific meter that, that suddenly points to 65,000 or 65 million years or any date. The dating of fossils right now, say at 65 million years old, is something that comes from the stratification of the layers of geology. There's no exact meter that's pointing to a date 65 million years old. Rather, it's guesswork based on uniformitarian geology, the geological theory that says that stratification and layers of Earth come slowly over millions and millions of years. Yet, in the opposite theory of cataclysmic geology, we now have an explanation for the stratification of the Earth, which happens in a much more rapid period of time. And if that is a more correct view of the geological activity of the Earth, we would then see this 65 million years of geological time compressed into a much shorter period of time, and therefore fossils that are said to be 65 million years old would not be 65 million years old, but much, much more recent than that. The Acambaro collection found in Mexico in the 30s and 40s and um, excavated in the 50s is, is an amazing subject. Here we have clay figurines, apparently pre-Columbian, dated as about 4,000 years old, which show, again, dinosaurs and prehistoric animals with humans interacting in unusual ways. And apparently, these are authentic. And I think that I think there really is something to the Akinbaro collection, and this is something that has been largely ignored by the scientific community, simply because it's so incredible it can't be true. Yet even the University of Mexico has authenticated this collection. Now the dating, again, is very crucial to the Akinbaro collection, because here we have ceramic artifacts that can be dated by known scientific methods. And rather than being recent hoaxes made in the last 50 years for some unknown purpose, I mean, they have proven that these are ancient ceramic pieces. And yet, they show the impossible, which is dinosaurs. Now, if we relate the Acambaro collection with the stones of Dr. Cabrera in Ica, Peru, we have an interesting paradox in that both are showing dinosaurs and humans interacting, yet Dr. Cabrera is claiming that his rocks are, of course, 65 million years old because that's when dinosaurs became extinct. While controversy in Mexico with the Acambaro collection, we have similar evidence of dinosaurs and people together, yet it's clear that the Acambaro figurines are not 65 million years old, but rather 6,000 years old, uh, give or take 1,000 years or so. I think that this is a more correct system of dating, and this fits in to the cataclysmic theories which I believe in, which is that the geological change and even the dating of these fossils is from a more recent time than ours and doesn't go back the 65 million years. The Acambaro collection in Mexico is fascinating and just as interesting as Dr. Cabrera's Ica stones in Peru. We have with Acambaro figurines made of ceramics which can be dated by a known scientific process. And the dating for these 
is something like 6,000 years before Christ.